The Dinosaur Gallery is one of the most popular and terrifying spaces in the museum, housing skeletons of T-Rex and Triceratops alongside life-size animatronic models. So if something goes wrong, it's a big problem. This morning, engineers Alex and Glenn have had an urgent call-out to one of the malfunctioning robotic dinosaurs. So this one, we think, needs to have the back of his neck looked at. To you. There are a lot of children who are genuinely terrified of these things. You know, recently, these models were taken down into our workshops and had the fur and the feathers added, rather more like the fluffy toys we sell in the gift shop. Trolley coming in. The motor in its neck has stopped working, and now the dino's head won't move properly. To avoid some very disappointed kids, it's crucial they get it up and running before the museum opens for the day. We've got deadlines to stick to here. We've got the public in in half an hour, so we've got to get this down into the workshop and have a closer look. Dino delivery. We're going to find a place to put her and wake her up. Can you make this part move, Glenn? Do it to the head turn, that one. Alex and Glenn need to open her up. Dino vet is one of the descriptions of my job. Children come to the museum and expect to see them working. It's a big disappointment when they're not. It's one of the things that people complain about if the dinosaurs are not working. Fortunately, with a spanner, a spare part and a bit of elbow grease... Right, let's get it back upstairs. ..the dino is up and running again. Try and have it running before 10. He says he feels better. Well, that's a job well done. Children will be in in half an hour. Back to terrifying the kids. The Natural History Museum is home to over 80 million different items, but its rarest are kept under lock and key, hidden away at the back of the museum's main hall in the Treasures Gallery. Today, one of the museum's dinosaur experts, Susie Maidment, has been granted special access to examine the most prized fossil in the entire museum. This is Archaeopteryx. It's probably the most important fossil of a dinosaur that there is anywhere in the world. Um, and I'm a little bit scared to touch it. It's just absolutely priceless. It's impossible to put a value on this specimen. At 147 million years old, this bird-like dinosaur is so highly valued because it was the first fossil to reveal that every species of bird alive today evolved from dinosaurs. Susie's been at the museum for two years and is one of the very few experts allowed this close. She's making a record of the fossil for other specialists to study. It is a bit stressful being this close to it. This case is almost never opened. It's very, very exciting for me to be able to have my head inside it right now um, and to be able to get a really close look at this fossil without the glass in the way. Archaeopteryx was discovered in Germany in 1861 and has been at the museum for over 150 years. And it's the mix of its features that makes it so intriguing. This specimen has a number of characteristics of both dinosaurs and birds. We have these beautiful feathers, which are so characteristic of birds. We've also got a wishbone, which is a bone in the shoulder region, which helps birds fly. And we've got a claw on the foot that allows birds to perch on branches. There are also a number of quite clearly dinosaurian-like features. You can see it's got a very, very long tail, and we don't have tails in modern birds that aren't just made of feathers. So these sorts of features make it much more similar to dinosaurs than to birds. I think Jurassic Park has a huge amount to answer for for our opinions about what dinosaurs look like. We tend to think of dinosaurs as being these kind of big, scaly, reptilian-like animals, but actually what we now know is that many of the meat-eating dinosaurs were feathered. And I think this kind of changes our opinion about what dinosaurs might have been like. They were probably very bird-like in their behaviour, and actually many of them we wouldn't have been able to distinguish from birds today. 
And I think when you look at some types of bird, if you've ever looked an ostrich in the eye, I think they look a bit like dinosaurs, actually. Dracorex hogwartsia. The original is in America, where it was discovered in 2004 and is named after Harry Potter's school. I'm super excited to get this beautiful dinosaur. It's going to be the centerpiece of our, our exhibition with the most amazing name, Dracorex hogwartsia, Dragon King of the Hogwarts. It's just going to be spectacular. You've got Wizarding World and magic, and you've got a dinosaur. What else do you need to start your exhibition? The complex skeleton has arrived in pieces without a manual and needs assembling. So Lorraine has called in dinosaur expert Susie Maidment. As a dinosaur researcher, what part of the dinosaur are you interested in? Most dinosaur experts like skulls, to be honest with you, because skulls can tell us a lot about feeding and things like yeah. that. I don't know, they're a bit more personal, aren't they? They so... are a bit more personal. Yeah. Well, you know, we do have... Have we got the skull? The replica skull, skull here. Have so do you want to... Yeah, I've got it on here with all the other bits yeah, here. Okay. So, um... Can I pick it up? Yeah, yeah. It's in really good condition and it's oh, really it's robust. Light. Yeah, okay. and it's really light. But don't you think that looks just like a dragon? It, it just looks exactly yeah. like... What you imagine it looks like. It's I so know, cool. I know. But Lorraine has discovered a problem with the replica skeleton. What's hoping... happened here, though? Well, I was hoping we could put it together today so that we could show you, but unfortunately, it's travelled across from the US, and so some of the pieces uh, were damaged. The one thing a conservator fears is undoing that crate and something is broken. And in this case, we found pieces of the dinosaur lying at the bottom. And so there's a sort of intake of breath and like, OK, let's have a look and see how much damage we've got. And so we've got ribs completely broken off, whole pieces broken off entirely. I've got some more pieces over on the table. So we will be able to repair it, but will take four or five days, which we hadn't planned for. We've got to somehow find the time to now repair this beautiful dinosaur so that we can install it. The clock is ticking and we have a schedule planned and now this is an additional piece of work that we've got to do. So any bits of spare time that we thought we had, we don't have any more and we're doing this. This whole rib cage section here had actually broken along quite a few of those lines. So what I'm doing is just that bit of in-painting so that you cannot see where that, that break happened. This has taken up quite a lot of time, and I'm going to nickname it a little bit of a diva dinosaur, to be honest, in terms of uh, the attention it's demanding from us. But, you know, it's worth it, absolutely worth it. With the repairs complete, Lorraine can finally try to assemble the Dracorex skeleton. This is like a giant Meccano set that's full of very fragile pieces that you're trying to put together. So you're literally building a dinosaur. It's getting longer. Yeah, it's nice and long now, isn't it? You feel like you're gradually bringing it to life as you put each piece on. It's just like an enormous jigsaw puzzle, but quite a challenging one. Jigsaw puzzles usually behave a little bit better than this dinosaur is. Dino expert Susie Maidment is joining Lorraine for its crowning moment. Hi, Lorraine. Hi, Susie. How this are you? looks good. This yes. looks much better than last time I saw it. So much better, isn't it? You've just caught me pinning the tail on the dinosaur, <gasps> uh, literally. Uh. <laughs> this is the last bit of tail, so I've got you down here because there's one more piece to put on, Susie. The skull. Mm -hmm. So can I do the honours, Lorraine? You can, can I... Susie. I've saved the best to last for you. It's all quite simple. Yeah. That's it. Then put him up like a little that. bit more so he's looking... Yes, exactly. Oh, there we go. Yeah. Oh, there he goes. Right. We let him go? Yeah. Hey. There he is. There he is. Look at that. Oh. oh. Handsome. Well, this specimen looks fantastic. I, I can't believe how different it looks from when I saw it. I think it's going to be the star of the show, as it should be as a dinosaur. So you've got Harry Potter, Wizarding World, dinosaurs, dragons. The whole mix is there, isn't it? The public are going to absolutely love this specimen.